The next thing we're going to talk about in this section is what they call the intermediate value theorem. Now if you refer back to in our notes about what the graph of a polynomial function looks like, uh, this should make some sense. It says if you plug in 1x and get a positive uh, function value or y value and plug in another x and get a negative uh, function value or y value, then uh, this should be there. is some x between those two that will have a function value of zero. So what that basically means, if you think about our function, definition of a graph of a function, that uh, it has to be smooth and it has to be continuous. So if I plug in some x value here and get a positive and here and get a negative, that somewhere in between, because it's a continuous graph, it has to cross the x-axis somewhere in between those two values. And it doesn't matter if you start with a positive value or say you uh, plug in some x and get a negative, you plug in some other x and get a positive, somewhere in between those two there has to be a function value that crosses the x-axis in between those two zeros. So let's look at an example. Here's an example. f of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x minus 5. So to find f of 2, you plug in 2. When you do that, you get an answer to be negative 1. So when you plugged in 2, you got negative 1. When you find f of 3, you get a value of 16. So what the intermediate value theorem says is it is not possible for us to go from 2 having a y value of negative 1 where f of 3 will give us a value of 16 without somewhere in between uh, 2 and 3 we would have to cross the x-axis. So therefore there is a 0 or fx equal to 0 between 2 and 3. And this will help us out a lot when we're actually trying to find zeros that are not rational. So uh, just keep this in mind because we're going to use kind of our tables in terms of our graphs to help narrow down where we're looking for zeros later on.